Hey everyone, it's Eric and of course Wendell from Farwater and we're here today to answer one of the most frequently asked questions from my YouTube channel and that is, how do I catch a walleye? It's pretty straightforward. It does not have to be rocket science. I'm here to break it down for you. I've been fishing walleye in northern Minnesota for about 20 years now and I have found four really effective, really easy to use methods that I want to share with you. The first two methods I'm going to talk about I refer to as search baits or search methods and the last two are for breaking down structure and fishing an area more thoroughly. So I'm gearing this towards entry level folks who are just getting into the sport who are struggling to catch walleye and really want to shorten their learning curve. One quick disclaimer before I jump in, I like to use sonar, but none of these methods require sonar. I know not all of you are as invested in the sport as I am and have dumped hundreds of dollars into electronics and fishing gear. So I wanted to come up with these four methods uh, that don't necessarily require sonar for those of you who don't fish with or have access to sonar. Number one is trolling, and specifically, I mean trolling crankbaits for walleye. You can troll with basically any bait that's designed to be casted and retrieved or straight trolled, uh, but I really like crankbaits, and I brought one of my favorites with me. This is the Rapala Deep Down Husky Jerk in natural gold chrome. It's got a black top and an orange bottom. The deep down husky jerk dives anywhere from 8 to 15 feet and even 20 if you let out a bunch of line or use trolling weights with it. Trolling does not have to be rocket science, but I wanted to highlight two really important things about trolling. Unless late in the year, it's incredibly important that when trolling, your bait is as close to the bottom as possible, preferably ticking bottom every once in a while. If you have your bait more than three feet off bottom, you are not going to catch very many walleyes. It's very important across all of these baits that you have your bait in the strike zone near the bottom where walleyes like to congregate. Why do walleyes congregate on bottom? That's where their food is. Simple as that. Walleye like to eat crayfish, minnows, leeches, worms, pretty much anything that moves that they can get in their mouth. And most of that stuff exists near the bottom, so you have to be fishing near the bottom. Late in the year, however, on big bodies of water that have bait fish that are large, like ciscos, um, I like to troll out over vast depths of water, um, over vast areas of water, and cover many depths. Method number two for searching and finding the walleyes is drifting and bottom bouncing. Grab yourself a bottom bouncer or a Lindy rig like I've got here and a spinner. A couple of different types of spinner. This one specifically is a crawler harness. It's got two hooks so it's designed to be used with a night crawler. Single hook can be used with a leech, a minnow, or a soft plastic imitation bait. You've got a long Snell, leader, whatever you want to call it, anywhere from three to six or seven feet to reduce visibility of the line in the water. And all you do is drift with that bait over the side of the boat, use the bottom bouncer or the Lindy rig to maintain bottom contact, which in effect keeps your spinner, your attractant, and your bait in that strike zone, somewhere roughly one to three feet off the bottom. This method I believe is much more effective than trolling crankbaits because you know your bait is always on or near bottom. You don't want to be dragging that bait across bottom. Just like trolling, you want to be clicking that bait every once in a while, ticking rocks, ticking bottom, literally using that weight to feel bottom and keep the bait in that strike zone. This is an incredibly productive way to fish when it is midsummer. There isn't a whole lot of wind or the fish are pressured by a high pressure front that's rolled in after a storm or after the mayfly hatch, which up here really makes fishing tough. Switching over to that bug bite from the minnow bite mid-season is a really effective way to put walleyes in the boat. The last two methods I want to talk about are ones to employ after you've used your search baits to locate the fish. Once you've located a general area in which the fish are congregating, it's time to switch over to something a little more finesse and pluck those walleye off the structure. Number one, and my number one bait for all species, is a traditional jig. Nothing fancy. This one's an eight ounce jig in green. 
which by far has caught me the most walleyes up here in northern Minnesota of any bait. For walleye, I like to use anything from a small 16th ounce jig all the way up to a half ounce jig when the fish have moved into deeper water or stronger current. Jigging by far has caught me my most fish and all of my personal bests across all species. Jigging is by far my most effective method of fishing and one I would totally recommend that everyone gets comfortable with and utilizes. Jigging is incredibly versatile. You can pair jigs with live bait like leeches, minnows, and night crawlers, or you can use soft plastics. You can even put a paddle tail on a heavier half ounce or bigger jig and use that as a search bait like the first two methods, chucking your bait over longer distances and working vast areas of water. Jigging is so incredibly effective for two reasons. Number one is it allows you to keep bottom contact, maintain bottom contact with that jig. I always like to use as light of a jig as I possibly can and still feel bottom. Not only does jigging allow you to maintain bottom contact, but since you're cued into the sensitivity of the rod, it also increases your hookup percentage. When a walleye, which are classically known for a light bite, bite your jig, you feel it almost instantaneously. So it's easier to set the hook immediately and your hookup rate is better. Last but not least, still fishing. More specifically, a slip bobber rig with live bait. I really like pairing slip bobber rigs with leeches this time of year because they're incredibly productive, have a lot of action, and attract a lot of walleyes. You can also use night crawlers or earlier in the season minnows. Pretty straightforward. I've got a number six size circle hook here in anodized red. I have got about four, maybe five inches of fluorocarbon leader in six pound. I've got a Snell barrel swivel tied to reduce line twist, and then I've got a 16th ounce slip weight below, of course, a slip bobber. Slip bobber fishing is incredibly productive because it keeps your bait in that strike zone. One fantastic thing about slip bobber rigs is you can fish them in almost any depth of water. You have a bobber stop here. You can slide up or down to change the depth of your bait to keep it in that strike zone, no more than three feet off bottom. While slip bobber fishing can be incredibly productive, it is also a fool's errand and can be a waste of time if you are not in the proper depth. You not only want your bait within a foot or two of bottom, you also want your bait near structure where walleye are searching for bait fish. Bonus points for slip bobber fishing because it's an incredibly effective way to fish from shore or from camp if you don't have a boat. So now that we've talked about my favorite baits for walleye, we should probably talk a little bit about color. While I do believe color is important, I don't believe it is the most important thing when fishing for walleye. More important to me is the structure, the depth, and the location at which you're fishing. However, making subtle changes in lure color can help your odds at catching fish. My general rule of thumb is to consider lakes in one of two categories, either clear, deep lakes, or stained, high fertile, low visibility water lakes. Stained lakes, I really like concentrating on crayfish colors or anything that's bright. Bright yellows, pinks, reds, oranges, chartreuses, etc. In clear water, I like to go for more natural or darker colors. Black, blue, purple, white, chartreuse is good for both and probably green. Overall, green and pink are my favorite colors for targeting walleye in all bodies of water. While walleye fishing can be intimidating for those of you who are just getting into the sport for the first time, it certainly doesn't need to be challenging to catch your first walleye. I feel that if you use the four methods I've discussed, trolling, drifting, jigging, and still fishing, you're gonna have no problem catching walleye in any of these Canadian Shield lakes here in northern Minnesota. All you gotta do is get out there and put these methods to use, practice, and figure out what method you're most confident with. Thanks for watching. Wendell and I really enjoyed putting this video together for you all. Hopefully it helps. If you like this content and want more, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Did you get it? Good boy.